Hello and welcome back to a Minecraft Odyssey. How you guys doing? I uh, hope you're ready to enjoy some amplified survival Minecraft. Uh, I am way up here in the sky, like 160 blocks uh, up, way above our base here. There's like this little spire with a tree on it. Um, and man, the view is pretty good up here. Uh, I've just been looking around and uh, that area right back there, there is a really cool looking like root forest valley right there. And I can just sort of imagine a road coming up from that area and then like going around here and coming around and then that could be like our creepers pass road. I think that would look pretty cool. Uh, but anyways, the reason I, ooh, 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 careful, don't fall off that. Um, the reason I am up here is because a couple episodes back, uh, we started the episode out with a bit of a uh, daredevil jump. Uh, we jumped off of that tree over there into the uh, swimming or water pool down there. Uh, and I figured, you know what, let's step it up this time. I'm quite a bit higher, and I can't even see it. And I'm going to try and jump into that thing over there and try and land in the water, and we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't think I can do it from here, though. I think I'm going to have to build myself, like, a little dirt board. Uh, I'm going to try and make it as short as possible. Um, no, that's still too short. Uh, can I get it from there? Um, uh, maybe one more. I think one more. Okay, I feel good on that. I feel good. Um, so yeah, so a blind jump. Let's see if we can hit it 160 blocks down. Uh, hopefully this goes well. Um, yeah, well, here goes nothing. Ha! Come on. Oh, go, 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 go. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I wasn't worried. I, you, you know, I knew we had that. I knew it the whole time. I uh, wasn't worried at all. Uh, yeah. Oh, that was pro, man. That was pro. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at all those dropping down. That's what I like to see. Give me that gunpowder. Um, yeah, anyways, the reason we're coming down here. How did you get down there? Oh, he's a feather falling zombie. Yep, yep. I need to fix it. I need to, I need to put in a system for dealing with these feather falling guys. Oh, uh, yeah, anyways, the reason we're coming down here today is that we need to finish up the slime farm. Um, and I think I've figured out what I want to do. Uh, what kind of killing mechanism we're gonna we're gonna go with? I don't have all the details ironed out, but I got a pretty good idea of uh, what I want going on. Um, I've also been clearing out a little bit of area down here. Um, I know I want it to be a lot more open. Um, I'm not sure what kind of look we're gonna go with, but I just been clearing some stuff out to get an idea. That's where the beacon is. Um, that's where the uh, mobs drop from the mob farm. The slime farm. Let's get uh, let's get back on topic here. Yeah, so what are we going to do for the killing mechanism? Well, first, let's talk about the overall design. Um, if you remember, this design is based off the one uh, made by Milky from the Zip Crowd server called, he calls it the Bioreactor. Um, and uh, we made a slight modification to it in that instead of having four dispensers at every level, um, we have a one water bucket design. So there's one water bucket way up there that goes through a series of like fences and gaps to uh, cover up all the, all the spawning pads. And uh, with Milky's design, uh, what you have to do is you put uh, iron golems in the middle of it, and there's a slime reducer. So there's a lava blade that turns big slimes into medium slimes, and then the iron golems kill the medium slimes. Um, the flaw with it is that uh, eventually the iron golems will die, and so it does cost you iron. I don't remember what the exact figures were. It was like this much, so much iron for so many double chest of slime balls, which it wasn't bad. Um, it's just a small flaw, right? Um, but what I was thinking about was, well, why make iron golems at all, right? Uh, why not just have an iron farm that supplies iron golems directly into the farm? So that way it doesn't cost us iron. And in fact, we get not only slime balls, but then we also get iron bars uh, from the farm as well. Anyways, uh, that's the general idea. Instead of, uh, you know, building iron golems using iron blocks and pumpkins, and coming back and refilling it every once in a while, we are going to create a uh, just a single village iron golem farm, and then we're going to have a, some way of getting them into the killing area, um, where eventually they'll die. And what will be interesting is trying to balance it out, because we're going to have to try to figure out the right rate of iron golems uh, versus the rate of slimes, because we want the iron golems to eventually die. And if the iron golems stack up too much, like there's 10 of them in there, well then they're not going to die. They're just going to take out the slimes really quickly. Um, but then if the slimes kill them too quickly, um, then there will be nothing to kill the slimes, right? And the slimes will just end up despawning. So uh, trying to figure that out would be really interesting. But I like the idea. It's going to be like a hybrid farm design. We're going to get iron and slimes from it. And the question now is where am I going to put the iron golem farm? Um, I got a few ideas. Uh, 
Uh, one that I'm really leaning to right now is just putting the iron golem farm on the bottom of this farm. Um, and I might have to use one of these spawning pads as an iron golem spawning pad. Because um, I'm trying to consider the amount of space we have. Because right, we have to have a minecart system under here as well to collect all the drops. Um, so we need to make sure we leave ourselves some room. Um, I think that's the, the right way to go. And one reason I'm leaning towards that is because in the future, I think I have plans of putting like some type of artificial village um, up on the surface up there. Um, and if we do that, we have to make sure that the iron golem farm is far enough away uh, from the surface that they, the villages don't connect. And the surface up there is at about Y level 115, Y level 110, something like that. And we're all the way down here at Y level 10. So that's plenty far away to make sure that this iron golem farm uh, will not connect to whatever artificial village we put up there. All right, so we are back up here on the surface for the moment. Uh, I need to grab a few ender pearls. Um, you can see that I moved the beacon. So of course it was over there. Um, that is because I'm clearing out some ground down off yonder over there. It was outside the range of where the haste beacon was. So I had to move it over a little bit. Um, I don't think that's permanent, uh, but just for the time being. Uh, but yeah, I have been clearing out a lot of, of area underground. I've had some indecif indecisiveness um, about where I want to put the iron farm. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've, I've gone through quite a bit of, of stuff. Um, you can see I've got some smooth stone on me. That is because I wore out our work pick and had to retire it. Um, this is where I'm putting all our old picks, by the way. Uh, these have all been max repaired, so we're looking at a lot of, a lot of picks worth of stuff here. Um, yeah, I, I'm just keeping all of our old picks because I'm kind of curious to see how much we end up going through or how many we end up going through. Uh, but yeah, I did some enchanting and got us our uh, smooth stone generator three. So pretty cool. It is in a unbreaking three efficiency five silk touch pick. And it was kind of funny because it took me a few, I think I enchanted five different times and I did not get ex what I expected to get. Um, if we take a look here, I got three fortune three pickaxes, which is pretty crazy. Um, normally, I'd be really happy about that, um, except that I'm not really in need of a Fortune 3 pick. I was trying to get a work pick, um, and so what I ended up doing is taking two, one of the two Unbreaking 3 picks and then just throwing an Efficiency 5 Silk Touch pick onto it. Uh, but let's head back down here. Things have changed a little bit. I can't jump down anymore because that uh, Haste Beacon is like right over where the water is. Ooh, almost fell off. Um, but this will take us down here right away. Um, ooh, come here. This place is not... Uh, lit up securely anymore. I got little dark spots everywhere. Um, there's some big slimes. At first, I was going to put the iron farm over there. Oh, by the way, I decided against uh, putting the iron farm underneath this thing. And the reason for that is because we're going to have to have skylights going all the way up to the surface um, for the houses. So in order for the, uh, the iron golems to work, in order for the doors to be recognized as houses. And uh, that is going to go right through the middle of our base. And uh, I'm not really keen on having like these big sections of skylights going right through the middle of our base and just kind of looking strange. So I decide it's better just to put the iron golem farm off in the distance somewhere and then transport the iron golems uh, to the slime farm. And first I was going to do it over there and I quit out some area and I was like, nah, you know what, next, uh, you know, I'll do it over here. Um, and then I quit out all this area over here. And finally I decided uh, what I want to do because we got this like ravine here that goes all the way across. It's kind of hard to see from this angle because I got that beacon in the way. Um, but we got like this this ravine that goes straight across this way. And what I want to do is when, I, when we come down from up there, however we're going to come down here, I want to be able to like see everything, right? I want to see the iron golem farm, which is going to be over there now. And then I want to see the iron golems being transported. I want to see the gear shop. Um, I want to see the, the slimes and the, and the iron golems fighting each other and see the slime farm. So I, I want like this one big field of view um, of everything that's happening in this area. So... Uh, that is why I decided to put the Iron Golem farm over here. And that uh, bit of dark oak wood right here is marking where the Iron Golem farm is going to go. Um, and you can see this goes straight through this way. And uh, that is the uh, zombie dungeon right there. And then under here is where the Iron Golems are going to be transported. So we're going to go under the zombie dungeon. And then they'll be transported to this area over here where they'll fight the slimes. Um, by the way, there has been a change of plans when it comes to what we're going to do here, we're actually not going to reduce the big slimes at all. Um, I have been doing a lot of testing in uh, Creative Worlds, and it turns out that medium slimes will not kill uh, the Iron Golems fast enough. Uh, they will eventually kill an Iron Golem, uh, but just not fast enough to keep up with the spawn rate. 
because um, we are going to be getting 10 iron golems an hour. Oh, and I, I misspoke earlier. I said 6 iron golems an hour. Um, why I had 6 on my head is because we're going to average 1 iron golem every 6 minutes. Um, but it's 10 iron golems per hour. And medium slimes just cannot kill iron golems fast enough to keep up with that. So we're actually going to let the iron golems and the big slimes fight each other. And I don't know how that's going to work out. Um, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to toy around with that and try to figure it out. Because um, the big slimes might kill the iron golems too fast, but uh, we'll find out after we make it and do some fine-tuning. Uh, but yeah, so, oh, over here, this opens up into a really cool ravine area over here, too. This is this was a, uh, a nice find. I was pretty happy to find this. Got this really cool lava lake over here and stuff. So maybe we'll make some sort of structure here for the iron golem farm. We'll have, like, a window, maybe, like, a little bridge going across the, uh, the lava or something. I don't know. Ideas. So many ideas. Ooh, look at that pretty green grass. <laughs> yeah, so I have been laying some grass down here. Oh, is it nighttime? Um, no, for some reason it looks... That must be lighting from the nether portal or something. Because I've done that like three times. There's like three times I've turned around here, and I've seen like that, that purple glow. And I thought, oh, it's nighttime. Time to go to bed. But no, no it must be the nether portal. Anyways, like I was saying, um, I love the grass in dark oak biomes. Or dark oak. Roofed forest biomes. Um... I might even like it more than the grass in jungle biomes, believe it or not. Um, and I just remembered as I was running by here and saw a little patch of grass that this is all um, in roof forest biome. So the more and more I'm down here and I'm thinking about what kind of look we want to go with, uh, I'm really thinking about doing some sort of like underground river garden type thing, like with little rivers and little ponds and little wooden bridges. And like wooden pathways and like little roofed forest trees and stuff. I think that would look so cool. Um, yeah, some good ideas. Some good inspiration coming on right now. Uh, but I have done a little bit of work over here. I have got one of the Iron Golem spawning pads in. And, oh, it's looking fancy. I am a little bit uh, stuck on the lighting options, though. Um, by the way, the design, uh, I wanted it to look good. But, you know, we're not going to be down here all that often, so I didn't want to do anything too complicated. I uh, just wanted it to, like, look nice whenever we happen to come down here and have a nice sort of easily re uh, repeatable design. And I think the whole, uh, the smooth slab and dark oak thing works pretty good. Uh, it's nice and easy to repeat, and we can build off of it. And, uh, yeah, it should be, should, should do pretty good. Um, but the, the lighting options, I'm stuck on that. What would look really nice down here is some sea lanterns. Uh, but we are a long ways away from getting our hands on any sea lanterns. Um, and you know what? It's kind of, it might be better that we don't have any right now because that's sort of the look that everyone's been doing, right? Like the the spruce and the dark oak with the stone and the sea lantern. Uh, pretty common design nowadays. So it might actually be better that we have to use something else because it will sort of force us to go with a different aesthetic, which can be nice sometimes, you know, just to mix it up. Um, I think I'm leaning towards the glowstone, though, to be honest. I kind of like that look better. It's a bit more of an old-school look, um, but we are underground, and we got that sort of cavey look. And what I like about the glowstone is glowstone has that sort of ambient, cavey lighting look going with it. So we may be able to do something with that. Now, we are going to be doing something a little bit different with this iron farm. It's not going to be your traditional single village iron farm. Um, and I'll talk about that as we build the other spawning pad. You can see that I brought a lot of materials down here trying to uh, figure out what we were going to go with. And then I just ended up doing something uh, super simple. Uh, all well, but I will grab these right here. Um, yeah, so we're not actually going to be putting the villages directly around the spawning pad like you would normally see. Um, in a single village design, and uh, which is kind of strange. We're actually going to be putting them off in the distance a little bit. Um, and the way that works is uh, keep in mind that the, the iron golems are going to spawn wherever the center of the village is um, in a 16 by 16 by 6 spawning area. Now, let's see, let's go up. One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay, that's where the next one's going to be. Yeah, in a 16 by 16 by 6 spawning area, I shouldn't say area, spawning body or spawning volume. I don't know. That doesn't really make sense. Well, you get what I mean. Um, and so you can control where the iron golems spawn uh, just by simply making sure that you have the spawning pad in the center of the village. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have at least two different housing areas, maybe three. I may try to triangulate a little bit um, off into the distance and then uh, make the iron golem spawn here 
by simply making this the center of the village. Um, so just for like a quick demonstration, if I say this is the iron golem farm, and normally you would put the houses completely around it, well, I'm going to put one group of houses off in the distance over there somewhere, and then another group of houses off in the distance over there somewhere, but the center of the village will still be exactly where the um, spawning pad is, and so we, we can still control uh, where the iron golem spawn. So that is the idea. Now I'm also going to be doing something a little bit different um, with how we're going to make underground houses. If you've ever tried to make underground houses or an underground village, um, you've probably seen at least one LP -er try to do that. Uh, you'll notice that you got to cut like these giant big sections out of the ground to have skylights come all the way down. And the way most people do it, it's like a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. So there's one skylight for every house. And so we end up with these, you know, like I said, just massive sections cut out of the ground that go all the way from where you're at um, all the way up to the surface. Uh, but I was messing around and I figured out a way to make 20 houses off a single skylight. Um, so meaning that I'm only going to have to dig two holes, one on either side or three holes if I go with the three village thing. Um, let's see, let's go right here. Yeah, second one out. And uh, so we're only going to have to dig two holes down and make all our houses off of that. And I'll go ahead and go into a creative world and show you how that works. And I highly advise anyone who wants to make underground villages to use the method I'm going to show you because it's just so much easier. Um, let's get this out of here. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up this spawning pad here. Um, and then I'll go into that creative world and I will show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we are in that uh, creative world I was talking about. Um, I was doing a whole lot of testing over there with uh, iron farms and slime farms and stuff. Uh, but what I want to show you is over here where these uh, torches are. Um, this is where I was messing around with underground villages uh, and trying to make them a little more efficient when creating underground houses. So I had the idea that because a door will look five blocks ahead of it for a skylight um, and then use that to determine whether or not it's a house, I thought maybe I could put um, five doors in all four directions around a single skylight and each one of those would be an individual house. Um, but I didn't have a good way of testing that out because I don't have the village mod installed or anything so I didn't really know when something was creating a house. Uh, so I made this little underground iron farm here uh, to like to make sure and, and prove to me that a village was being formed because you have to have at least 21 houses in order for an iron golem to spawn. And the fact that the iron golem did spawn is proof to me that it is working. Um, and so what we got here is we have these two skylights. Um, and we can put up to 40 houses on these two skylights by just using this method of putting a door uh, five blocks in all directions. Now what was interesting that I found out is that this will not actually work if you have the doors sideways like this. I didn't know that was a thing. Like I thought if it would work this way... Uh, just as much as it would work the other way, but it does not. Uh, you have to have the doors uh, facing uh, the skylight, otherwise it won't look. Because it actually, it doesn't really matter how you place the door. It's actually the positioning of the door that determines where it looks. So if the, if the door is positioned like this, then it will look that direction, and it will look that direction. But if the door is positioned like that, then it will look that direction and this direction. It doesn't really matter how you, how you, uh, placed it to begin with, whether it's open or closed. It just looks in front or behind, you know, whichever way it happens to be facing. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. But again, like if you're making an underground village, I would really advise doing this method uh, because it's way more like space efficient. Um, like I, the way I've seen people do it before, um, where you have one skylight uh, per door. So if you wanted to have 40 underground houses, you would have to have 40 skylights. Um, you know, one-to-one -one ratio, one skylight for every door. And so from above ground, you would just have these really strange areas where you'd be walking along the ground. Uh, and, you know, then there's these huge strips in the ground going all the way down to your underground village. Kind of strange. Uh, much nicer, I think, and much more compact to do it this way. Uh, but yeah, so this is how we're going to be creating our underground villages um, for the iron farm and stuff like that. Um, and I think it'll work out pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Optimistic. Yeah, I think we're going to do good about this. So uh, I'm going to go back into the world, uh, do some work, figure out where I want to put these things and just how far I want them to space them apart. Um, because they do have to be within 65 blocks of each other to recognize or to, to form into a single village. 
but we can actually increase that distance by using satellite villages, which is a little bit more complicated, but we could do it if we wanted to. So, yeah, I'm going to go back into our world, do some work, and uh, think about where I want to put these things, uh, and I'll show you what we're up to after that. Hmm, so we have a bit of a problem here. Um, it seems like there is a slime chunk right over there where that obsidian is. Um, over here somewhere. So, yeah. Hmm, I might have to be doing some half slabbing or something. I was hoping to not have to really modify this area too much. Because I have some plans for why, or how I want it to look down here. I kind of want to preserve the natural look of the ravine and work with that. But if these slimes are a problem and if they're going to lower the rate in our other slime farm, uh, we might have to like half slab this whole area or something. But we'll see. We are far enough away where it might not be an issue. Because if we go back over here, um, the center of our base, where we're going to be most of the time, is way over there above the slime farm. So we're pretty far away from that slime chunk. Um, I don't think it will be an issue, but uh, eh, we might have to half slab anyways. Oh, yeah, check out the slime pads too. Um, they were looking a little plain. I was walking by here and I was seeing the, just, you know, the plain smooth slabs. And I thought I'd try that style we did for the iron golem pads. And I think it looks pretty nice. So I might go ahead and just continue this all the way up. Um, it's not amazing, but it looks better than it did before. So kind of cool. Um, but let's go back over to the slime farm. Uh, not slime farm, iron golem farm. And uh, you'll see that I got the uh, top spawning pad done. Oh, it's just a zombie dungeon. By the way, my mouse is like dying or something. So if I like do something funky, like just now, like I got stuck. Yeah, I think my mouse is dying. So I'm going to have to deal with that. Um, but yeah, so what I noticed after I finished this though, I didn't think about it first, is that we're not actually going to have to light up um, the spawning pads because they're covered in water, right? So we don't actually need the light sources. But I think I'm going to keep them anyways because I like the way it looks. Um, even though they will hurt the efficiency a little bit because the iron coolums cannot uh, spawn on top of glowstone. So we are going to lose 16 spawning spaces uh, and that might annoy the high efficiency people, but I'm going to keep it because I like the way it looks. Um, and, you know, I didn't really explain why I wanted to put the houses off in the distance. Um, yeah, I just kind of just skipped over that whole part. What I'm trying to do here is I want to make an iron golem farm that we can actually walk all the way around it and we can see inside. Um, and, you know, and it would look really cool. Most of the time you see an iron golem farm, it's just like this closed up box that you can't see anything that's happening. Um, and so I want to have like this hallway that goes all the way around it. Um, you can, if you can imagine, there'll be like, uh, oh, there goes my mouse doing something funky again. <clears throat> uh, there'll be like glass walls right here. And then we'll have the hallway that goes all the way around. I think it will look really cool. And we'll be able to see the iron golems spawning and stuff. And then there'll be like a glass floor right here where we can see the iron golems being transported. Um, yeah, so that's why I want the houses off in the distance. On the subject of the houses, I have went ahead and... Now, how did you get there? We got two slime chunks around here or something? What is going on? I did not know these existed, so... Huh. Well, I wonder if he came from over there, or if the one that was over there came from over here. I don't know. I'm going to have to go into, like, a slime finder or something and see what is going on here. But we obviously have slime spawning issues. Um, but, like I was saying, on the topic of the houses, I figured out where I want them to go. So we're only going to go with two of them. Uh, trying to triangulate things in Minecraft is a bit difficult because things work on fractions of blocks. Like you get like 0 0.8, 0 0.7 blocks, stuff like that when you try to triangulate things. So we're just going to go with two housing areas, one over here and then one on the other side of the spawning pad. And you can see I dug a skylight going all the way up. And by the way, if you, need, if you want to put a house underground, it is important that you have a skylight um, uh, where's my F3? of 15. So you'll see when I'm standing on this block right here, we have a sky of 15. And if you have anything lower than that, the house will not be recognized. So you need to make sure there's no leaves, there's no water, um, anything obstructing the light. You need that 15 in order for it to be recognized. Um, but this is where one of them is going to be. And it's uh, two blocks above the bottom spawning pad is where I'm going to put the houses. And the other one is exactly the same distance away from the spawning pad over here. Um, back in this little nook right here, here's another one. And I already dug the skylight going all the way up there. So. All right, so let's go ahead and build the first set of houses here. Um, and you know what? I am not going to get really technical with the design of these houses at the moment. Um, when I was first considering doing this, 
um, you know, I decided I was going to make some really cool, like, modern-looking houses for the villagers down here and stuff. Um, and then we'll just sort of have this little spawning... Actually, I need that block back. Um, we'll have this little spawning house area here, sort of hidden, but close enough so that the villagers can recognize it. Uh, but the thing is, you know, it's like Doc M always says, function before design. Uh, let's just go ahead and get everything working first. Um, let's go ahead and get the, the iron farm working first and the slime farm working. And then we can come back later and decide, you know, want a cool looking design for this stuff. Um, it, let's let's put not put the cart before the horse. I do have plans of coming back in a future episode and making some much cooler looking houses for the villagers. Let's open that up like that. Uh, but we're just going to do this for now. There you go. There is 12 houses. We're going to have 12 houses here. And we're going to have 12 houses over there. And I'm just going to stick the villagers down in like a hole here. Um, I don't want them interacting with these doors. Because remember how I mentioned before that if these doors are sideways like that, it will no longer be recognized as a house. So I definitely don't want the villagers close enough to interact with the doors because I don't want them opening and closing them. Uh, but they need to be close enough to, to recognize them. So I'll just stick a few villagers here, um, a few villagers there, uh, cover it up, and then that's going to be our really amazing looking house. Like I said, we'll come back later and we'll make it look a lot cooler. Um, but let's just go ahead and get this iron farm up and running. Hmm, what is going on here with some railroad tracks? Uh, you know what? I think that was a slime, wasn't it? I was kind of... Yeah, that was probably... Yep, baby slime. So they're like spawning up on that ledge and falling down. We may actually have to half slab this stuff because it's been... They've been spawning a lot more than I thought they would. Um, but back to the farm here. Uh, I have gotten the, those houses set up. There is 12 houses over there and 12 houses over there. And the center of the village is directly where this uh, spawning pad is. So we should get the iron golem spawning right here. Uh, but what we need to do now is we need to get our hands on some villagers. Um, we need at least 10 villagers in order for the iron golem to spawn. Um, and at first, I was thinking about making a, a villager breeder. Because if you remember from a long time ago, um, we had those two villagers up by the zombie sweeper mob farm. Um, and we had to get that villager inside of the mob farm in order to make it work. Uh, but instead of creating a villager breeder, I just decided to retrofit uh, our uh, gear shop over here into a villager purifier. Uh, so this is temporary, like this is not going to be permanent. Um, I'm just going to use this in order to get the villagers that we need. It's just, you know, so close to the farm that it's going to be a lot easier to do it this way. Um, and, you know, I do have plans of redoing, like having a, a gear shop 2.0. I think there's something pretty cool that we can do. Um, so yeah, this isn't going to be permanent. I'm going to turn this back into the gear shop after we're done. Uh, but if you've, if you've never seen how one of these works, um, we are inside a zombie dungeon here. And we've created these dark spots in the ground um, where the zombies can uh, spawn. And when they do spawn, uh, there is a redstone lamp with a pressure plate on top of it. Um, and so it lights up the little cell so nothing else can spawn. And that's important because um, if you get a villager in there, uh, or if you get a villager zombie, and you change him back into a villager and a zombie spawns back into that same cell and kills the villager, well, you just wasted a golden apple, right? So uh, that's why you have the pressure plate with the redstone lamp. Um, but yeah, so that's what you do. You just wait for the uh, the villager zombies to, to spawn. Um, and then I have a potion of weakness over here, um, or several potions of weaknesses, and some golden apples. So we'll switch them into villagers, and then uh, transport them over to the houses. I'm going to get two of them uh, in those houses, and then two of them in the houses over there. And then I'll just throw food at them and try them to, to breed the rest of the way. I don't think I'm going to do all 10 villagers uh, from the purifier. I think it will probably be easier just to get them to breed after I get two of them in there. Alright, so I finally got a second villager in there. Uh, it took me quite a while actually. So I think breeding them, I think getting two into each housing area and then breeding them from there on out will be the right idea. Because it took me like 20 minutes to get that second uh, villager. But we got two here now. Uh, let's go ahead and convert the two of them and then get them into their new home. So this should hit both of them, I think. Um, oh, I have my particles turned off. I'm pretty sure. Yep. And oh, I still love that noise. That's, that's still like the coolest sound effect in the game. So I'm going to sit here and wait for these guys to convert. And then we will go on a little, uh, little train ride. All right. So we have our first customer here. Um, I'm just going to place down this rail here and then get... Oh, there goes the other one too. Um, and we're going to try and get this guy in the cart, and hopefully he doesn't 
running around too crazy. There's no, we got to wait for him to walk out of there. There is like no way to position yourself behind a villager to move them. When they're in a corner like that, they're just, they're stuck. So you just got to wait for them to move. Uh, once he moves from there, then I'll be able to push him into the cart. And uh, hopefully it happens sometime soon. Come on, guy. All right, so I went and made a fishing rod. Um, so we can get this guy out of there. And it looks like it's a good thing I did because he has yet to move from that position. Okay, come on now. Get get into the cart. Get in there. Get in. Get in. Get in. Yes. Okay. Um, let's get him out here first. Let's, we got to protect this guy. And whoa, 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 whoa. He's moving fast. He's moving fast. Is he doing that? Because there's no powered rails. There's no way that could be momentum. He's got to be like walking in that direction or something. Oh, oh are you kidding me? I had that planned out and everything. Get in there. Don't walk. Get in there. Nope, nope, nope. No, don't walk away. Okay, okay, we're good. Okay, so that worked out. Awesome. Um, and now let's go ahead and do the next one. <sighs> Why do they? Ju that's so weird. The way they jump up like that. Just fall down. Just fall. Yes. Okay. So now we got two of them. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hopefully, he's, that's the that's the zombie flesh guy. Hopefully, he'll still trade with me. All right, so that was relatively pain-free. Um, I thought we were going to have trouble with, I don't know, the the villagers getting away and like running around and having to corral them or getting attacked by zombies or something, but uh, everything went pretty smoothly. Uh, what we need to do now is get a whole bunch of food uh, and uh, breed them up. And uh, yeah, get them loaded on food so they start breeding and increasing the population. What's nice now is that we have this... Uh, this farm up and running and everything is I have all the bone mill I could ever want right here so we're gonna be able to get a whole bunch of carrots here really quickly and ooh, check out all that gunpowder we're getting almost up to another double chest full of gunpowder again um, so pretty happy about that um, yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and just get a whole bunch of carrots load them up um, and then we'll see hopefully they uh, rise up the population size pretty quickly all right so let's get these guys some carrots Come on, come on, load up your uh, your favorite aphrodisiac. I want to see some hearts. How it takes like uh, like a, a half a stack or something per per villager, I think. I don't remember exactly. You know, I need to turn my particles on. Why do I even have those off? Uh, video settings, particles, all. I want to see some hearts. Oh oh, there they go. There's the hearts. Oh yeah. Where's the baby at? Oh, look at him. He's so cute. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's the first one right there. Um, what I'm going to be doing is just uh, bone mealing a whole bunch more carrots and uh, loading up these guys and loading up the guys over there. And uh, hopefully the population will increase to the size we need it to. Um, and then after we get 10 villagers, uh, we should start seeing iron golem spawning. So... Um, I'm going to get to work at that. It may take a while. It takes a long time for villagers to breed. So uh, we'll see. All right. So I have gotten those villagers um, up to population on both sides. So we have five villagers over there now and five villagers over here. So we have all 10 villagers. Um, I did have to increase the door count for a little bit. Oh, it's nighttime. Um, I did have to decrease the door or increase the door count for a little bit because I only had 12 doors here and that would only support four villagers. So in order to encourage the fifth villager to spawn, um, I had to momentarily increase the door count. But now that they're there, I can get rid of those doors. Um, but one thing that I've noticed here, um, we should have gotten an iron golem spawned by now, and we have not. And I figured out what the problem is. Um, like I said earlier, you can put the villages 65 blocks apart, and they'll still merge together. And I put the two closest doors um, from the villages 65 blocks apart. But what I forgot to consider um, is that works for single village, like single door villages. 
when you're dealing with multi-house villages, it's a little bit different. Um, it goes from the center of the village. So, and you can see we have all these doors um, on the back right here. So we have 10 doors going this direction um, and only a few doors going in this direction. So even though this door is way out here, the center of this village is probably back right about there. So the barom uh, barometric center, I think is how you describe it. Yeah, somewhere right about there. And I need to bring the center of the village over to about right here. So two blocks to the left. Um, I need to do that on both sides in order to get the uh, villages close enough to each other so that they will merge. And I think we can do that really easily here um, just by knocking out a few doors. Uh, we won't be able to spawn an iron golem because we won't have enough houses. But all we really need is for the uh, villages to merge together. And then once that happens, uh, we can get uh, we can put the doors back to the way they were. And uh, everything should work out. If this doesn't work, um, one thing that we can do that I know will work um, is we can create another like skylight right here um, and put down a satellite house. And what will happen is as soon as this house gets recognized, it will join into that village over there and it will bring the center of the village way over this direction. Um, and then it will very quickly link with uh, the other village. But that's a lot of work because uh, we'd have to get another villager <clears throat> and it takes like 15 minutes using that uh, villager purifier. It's not the fastest thing in the world. So I'm hoping that we can just knock out a few doors here um, and this will do what we want it to do. Uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go into the nether for about uh, a minute or two because going into different dimensions uh, tends to encourage villages to merge together. So I'm going to do that after I go to sleep here. Um, and then we'll come back and wait a little bit longer, see if an iron golem spawns and uh, see what's up. <sighs> Man, where is this iron golem? He should have spawned by now. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, so I was sitting down here just waiting for this guy for like five minutes. It's like, oh man, I'm going to have to make a satellite house. My little village merging trick didn't work. And lo and behold, he was up there for who knows how long. Um, so yeah, he was. He must have blended in because I did walk by here a few times. He must have blended in with the diorite or something. Um, oh, and I forgot, I forgot to tell you guys um, when I was making this uh, top spawning pad here and I was digging out the ceiling... Uh, we actually breached into another cave system. So I did not like get some TNT and blow all this out. Um, I'm sure that was a bit of a shock when I came through here and it was all big and open and stuff. Like, wait, wait, what? What happened? Yeah, we just hit another cave system. And you know what? I think it looks uh, pretty cool. Um, I was considering putting just like a five block tall uh, ceiling on this thing uh, for the iron farm. But now that we have this pretty neat open cave area, I think we should just like keep it open like this. Um, I think that would look really cool and maybe come back later and like put some some bushes hanging from the ceiling and stuff and put some stalactites um, or is it stalagmites? I, I, I was getting confused. I, I don't know. <laughs> but we make it look like a little cool natural cave uh, dome and keep it all nice and open and I think it will look pretty cool. But yeah, that is the iron farm um, up and running. I don't have the water in yet and I don't have the sides and everything. I'll do that later um, between this episode and the next. Uh, because I think uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. Like always, I just underestimated the amount of work it would take to do something like this, put in underground villages and an underground iron farm. Uh, but I am pretty happy with what we got going on right now. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So obviously the next uh, plan is to set up a transportation system for this iron golem. He's going to drop down there and he's going to go underneath here um, through a little canal in right next to the slime farm and then we're gonna have to figure out what we want to do with this um yeah, that's the next project is figuring out uh, how we want to regulate the slimes and the iron uh, golems fighting each other um, i'm thinking of putting in like an optional slime reducer of some sort um, because like i mentioned before the medium slimes will not kill the iron golems fast enough but the big slimes might kill them too fast so we're going to have to have some sort of regulator, regulatory system to, uh, to get that balanced out. And I'll have to work with that off camera and uh, think of what we're going to do. But this is pretty cool. I'm excited to have this up and going. Uh, we should be getting to the, the slime processing next episode. Unless Minecraft 1.9 comes out. Um, if Minecraft 1.9 comes out, then I might have to mess around with all those new features. Uh, they just had Minecon today as I'm recording this. And so many features are, are coming to the game. Uh, just that they showed at Minecon, and I'm super excited. So if that comes out, we may end up messing with that instead, but we'll see. 
Uh, so yeah, anyways, thanks for uh, watching. Sorry we didn't get as much done today as I thought we would, but uh, I'm pretty happy with what we do have. And uh, yeah, it was fun. So uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.